Well, holiday season is here and there are a lot of the coffee machines are going on sales. Which one do you purchase? Maybe you're looking to upgrade your current machine. Maybe you're looking to get into making coffee at home for the first time and you've got a budget between one and three. Well, let me give you some tips and guidance on what machine to buy and what my recommendations are if I was buying one this holiday. G'day YouTube, Ride here, your coffee coach. I'm going to tell you which machines I recommend between one and $3,000. Now, the price may vary from country to country. So if some of the recommendations I have on a couple of the machines are much more expensive in your country, it may change the value proposition and I might not recommend it as highly. So please let me know. I only just discovered that around the world, they're charging ridiculous prices for the Breville Dual Boiler, which we can get here in Australia for $1,000. You might find in the Philippines for two and a half thousand Australian dollars, which is insane and at that price point, I don't recommend it. But let's get into it and I'll take you through all the machines you can buy between one and three. So coming in at just over $1,000 is the Ranchilio Silvia. And Ranchilio is a favorite brand of mine. I've had one for many, many years and I love their Silvias. They've up to version six now and they have improved it each time along the way. But these are base models, so there is a steep learning curve. But if you're buying this Ranchilia Silvia version six and not the Pro or the Pro X, you are going to have to have a bit of skill or at least be ready to learn some skills because mastering this machine is a little bit tricky at first. That's because it doesn't have all of the modern features that some of the other machines have with temperature stability and control and pre-infusion and being able to do milk and coffee at the same time. It's not the sexiest looking machine, but in terms of reliability, this machine is unbeatable. They probably are gonna last you about 20 years and you might not even have to do that much maintenance to them. I've seen some people wreck them, run them into the ground and they're still operating and producing a decent coffee. Now my next recommended brand is Lele. Now, Lelite, they could actually fit across all of these videos from under a K to over 5K. They have a huge range and it just really depends on what you want out of it, what your budget is and what features you might need. So the first machine that starts off in the Lelite range is the Anna. And the Anna is just under $900 here in Australia. It's a base model machine, just your 57 mil portafilter, so it's not a commercial standard size portafilter, which does mean you're gonna to have to buy a tamper, any other baskets, screens, whatever, at that 57 mil range, which is a little bit harder to find. You can upgrade that Anna to a PID version, and a PID is a temperature control, so it actually allows you to stabilize the water so that that temperature stays the same and it allows it to just keep refilling so you don't run out of water as easily and you don't have to wait for it to cool down or heat up to get that perfect extraction. But the Anna is a great machine to get started on. Again, it's not the sexiest looking machine, but if you're looking for that budget and you don't need all the bells and whistles like a dual boiler, then this is a great place to start. Now, from that Anna range, there goes up to the Grace. It has a few more features and a few more displays, but really there's not a huge jump in quality from the Anna to the Grace. When you jump to the Anita, you're just adding in a built-in grinder, which I don't recommend, but if you must and you can't afford to spend money externally on a grinder, which I really believe you should invest in a grinder first and then your machine, but a lot of people just wanna get all-in-ones, then the Anita's there for you as well. The next one up is the Victoria. Now it's actually a 58 mil portafilter, and I think if you can push your budget to that over the Anna, or the Grace, I would because making it 57 mils means that it's just such a pain to buy accessories. They're very limited in where you can get them from. And why not just go for that extra mil and get the 58 mil, then you can buy any standard commercial equipment and use it on this machine. After that comes the Kate, which is the 58 mil portafilter, but a built-in grinder, again, if you're looking for that all-in-one machine, these are fantastic. However, understand why you don't want to have a built-in grinder. Two reasons that are the main reasons. One is water, moisture, 
and heat. Now, when coffee grinds, which can go really fine and powdery and actually go up into the air, fall into your machine and start to get moisture and heat applied to them, they will corrode your machine and eventually they'll wreck it. But that's a long-term problem. You won't see that straight away. And if you maintain your machine, you may be able to avoid that. However, the other problem is, is that it will heat your beans up. Because it's sitting so close to the boiler, the heat transmission to your beans will actually affect those beans. So if you're keeping beans in the hopper overnight, I just wouldn't recommend that at all. Just dose for each coffee that you're gonna make, put them in, grind it, and then leave that hopper empty so that the beans don't heat up. And then lastly in the Lay Leet range is the Elizabeth. The Elizabeth is the dual boiler range. And for $2,500, it's a fantastic price dual boiler that you don't get and you don't see in a lot of other machines. A lot of the other dual boilers other than the Breville are a lot more expensive. So the Elizabeth gives you all of those features plus the reliability of 15 plus lifespan and you get all of the other bells and whistles that you would do with the Kate and the Victoria. Now, I'm getting into a range where it gets a little bit tricky because there are a lot of manufacturers who use this model style of machine called the E61. And the E61 is very noticeable by the fact that the group head sticks out from the machine. E61 was invented in 1961. Fiamma invented this technology and ever since then it's been used throughout most machines right up until the modern era when maybe some more technologies come in and are Aside from just refining it, they've actually changed the way that they brew the boiler and heat that up. So these heat exchange models, their E61 group head, are 58 mil porter filters. Lots of manufacturers make these machines now. So Profitech, ECM, they're the same company. They do the same things. Rocket bought the rights to that information. So they also produce the same machines. Then you've got Isomac, you've got Bezerra, you've got Lapavoni. All of these Italian brands are fantastic and I think you can't really go wrong if you're looking for a heat exchange machine which allows you to do milk and coffee simultaneously. It doesn't have the best temperature stability like a PID will give you, but it still gives you all the bells and whistles that you really need to make coffee at the same time as steaming your milk and you get that 15 plus year reliability. I would look at Profitech because Profitech is probably a little bit higher quality than the other machines, although all of the machines are great. So if I missed out your machine here, you know, don't blame me because there are so many E61 machines out there in this price range, which aside from a few little functions and features and maybe little tweaks in design, largely look the same and function the same. The benefit of having an E61 group head means that you also get pre-infusion. There's a mechanical pre-infusion when you lift the lever up it starts the pre-infusion, and then you can go into full bar pressure. Maybe down the track, I'll do a full video just on E61 and how it's built, but I really don't even know if people are gonna watch that. Maybe some high school kid doing a research paper <laughs> might watch it, but E61, just remember, E61, it sticks out from the machine, so they're very visible, and they're great machines. You can't really go wrong with any of the Italian manufacturers. So let's talk about Profitech and ECM. That's the same company, and they're the ones that I would focus on personally if I was looking to buy a machine in this range. Profitech normally now focus on dual boiler technology, whereas ECM will focus on the E61 technology, but they're very similar. These come out of Germany, believe it or not. They're not Italian, but they are backed by Italian brains. So that means that all the technology and the design, the development is all Italian based. A lot of the research comes from Italy, but they're actually made with German manufacturing precision, which is fantastic for reliability and precision and for longevity. These machines are never gonna break down. Well, they might break down, but it might be every five years and you'll probably get 20 plus years out of them. So let's look at the first two base models from these machine manufacturers. You've got the Profitech Go and you've got the ECM Casa 5. Now they range from 1300, I think up to 1800 for the Profitech Go. So they're very similar, but my preference would be the Profitech Go. So the Profitech is probably my preference here. It does come in a couple of different colors as well. And so I get a little bit tired of looking at the chrome, square, boxy shapes of a lot of those machines. So the Profitech 
stands out to me because it comes in a mustard, a blue, a red, a black, I think as well. So you get a lot more of that designer look to match your kitchen. And just for the $400 extra, I would probably go with Profitec. They're very similar in these two models, as in they both have the same heat up time of five to seven minutes. They have a 2.8 litre tank. They have 58 mil porter filters. Now, the nicer looking ones, which have the E61 heads, is the Classica from ECM and the Profitec 300. So in this range, you're getting a bit more control over the temperature of the coffee with the PIDs. You get a separate brew boiler. You get 58 mil commercial portafilters looks. You get a little bit better looking machine. Again, I would go with the Profitec just because you get jam packed full with features there. And it even has an option to turn off the full steam boiler. So you can just run it for black coffees if you're not really a milk drinker, which I think is great because a lot of people still want to use coffee machines every now and then for milk, but mainly you just use it for black coffees. You can turn it off and you save a lot of money just in that energy consumption. All right, so we're back with the Ranchilios. As I mentioned before, the Pro and the Pro X are dual boilers. They go for around 2,600 to 2,900. The only real difference between the two, the Pro and the Pro X, is pre-infusion. So other than that, they all have a PID temperature stability control. They have the shot clock timer. They have also the ability to do milk and coffee at the same time with cool touch ones. They have adjustable drip tray. So really, the only difference comes down to how important is that pre-infusion control for you? So what is pre-infusion, if you're asking me? Pre-infusion is letting the water, the hot water, drip onto the coffee cake before the pressure is applied. And that pre-wetting just allows it to open up all of those granules of coffee to release more oils and sugars before you apply the pressure and extract it in. So it's a way of experimenting with getting more flavor out of each coffee, depending on what coffee you're trying. But if that's not really important to you, just stick with the pro. However, I would spend the extra couple of hundred dollars and get the Pro X if I was buying myself one. Now, honorable mention here to the Rocket series. Rocket create fantastic machines. E61 mainly focused on those, but the Apartamento is just on that three, 3.1K Australian dollars. And I really think this is a fantastic looking machine, especially if you're wanting to get into that nicer chrome, big statement piece on your counter rather than the more boxy, less aesthetic looking ones of say the Ranchilio or the Gadgets. So with the Rocket Apartamento, you really get some nice chassis. So the look of feel of the machine, I think is really lovely. Plus it's E61, it's really high quality. You're getting all of that pre-infusion. You're having the cool touch steam ones. You have the ability because it's heat exchange to do milk and coffee at the same time and with these machines, I know you're gonna get 20 plus years out of them. So for three and a bit thousand dollars Australian, you really can get a statement piece that sits on your counter and tells people you are serious about coffee the moment they walk in. Now, as I mentioned with the E61s, there's a huge range out there. They don't differ too much in design style and aesthetic. So it's a really particular style that you're looking for if you're wanting to go down that E61 route, heat exchange, but you can't really go wrong with any of those brands that I haven't really covered here, but I've mentioned like La Pavoni and Bezzera. All of those brands, the Italian brands, make fantastic quality coffee machines and there's just a matter of preference, personal preference at the end of the day. So please drop me a comment in the section below. Give me a like, give me a subscribe. Let me know what machines I might have missed so I can cover them the next time around. But these are the ones that I think really are a standout that I want to talk about. The next one is called Escaso. Escaso is a pretty unheard of brand. Mostly I think it's coming more and more popular now. They've got two that fall into this range. They've got the Dream PID, which is a classic 50s, elegant, modern kitchen looking machine. I think it's really unique. And the fact that it comes with a PID to give you that temperature control is really awesome because that is something that a lot of the cheaper machines just don't have, and especially for this size machine, to give you that 
in such a compact machine, I think is one of the benefits and one of the reasons why I would look at Escaso the Dream for $1,900, pretty good price, great reliability, small footprint. So the Dream comes in many, many different colors to match your kitchen. The next up is the Duo Steel. And I love the look of this machine because it's got something that a lot of the other machines don't have, which are your toggle switches. So for whatever you're wanting to adjust, you just use one of the toggle switches, which will take a little bit of time getting used to. But this machine looks beautiful. I think it looks really classy. It comes in black and white and I think chrome as well. And for $2,700, it has also a PID and an OPV, which is an overpressure valve, which limits the maximum amount of pressure. So you can really play around with some pressure profiling if you wish to. On the fly, you can adjust it just with a little screwdriver and then you can be your own master of pre-infusion profiling. All right, so that's it for this group of machines. Please check out my other videos if you're wanting to look for machines from three to six and six plus, or even under $1,000, which there aren't many, but you might find something of use in there. I'm Ryde, your coffee coach, and as always, enjoy your brew.